Good morning. Welcome to week one of home learning. So this week, my motto, motto is going to be to keep it simple. So we're gonna talk about two things today. First, home packets. If you do not have internet access at your home, then you will be able to go to the school today to pick up this first week's packet and then the weeks following. So you will have a paper pencil version. I will show you a way to get um, your students work shared with me if you have a smartphone. So we'll go over that all in a little bit. Second thing I'm gonna talk about is if you are a parent that has digital devices and internet at home, you will not be receiving a packet at this time. I will show you where I linked the packets if you are able to print them out and would prefer to print out a paper version, there is an option for you that way. But otherwise, your students will be able to access the district packets online via Seesaw, which I'm going to cover today. So without further playing around, let's get started. Let me pull up for you my screen so you can see where and what to do. All right, so this first page that we've come to is our class website. Hopefully by now you're somewhat familiar. If not, I will share this link out again today with the email that this video goes out in. So it's mrsowen3.weebly.com. This is the home screen page where you land when you go to this website. You'll want to go down to home resources, click. And this takes you to the home learning resources page. This is that page where I have literally linked all the resources that you will need online for your student to work from home. I have also included for those of you who have smartphones but maybe not internet at home for your kiddos, um, I have included a tech free section um, that you can access this website via, again, a smartphone that has um, data and a browser, a web browser on it. So let's start with the packet. So previously, this is the resource the district had shared out, the district resources. Right below it, I have weekly district home learning packets. I've kind of provided a little information on those packets here. I won't read it to you, but you can read it yourself later. <laughs> um, so here's the district packet. When you click it, it will take you to the district website. They will be posting each of the packets here on the website. So we have weeks one through three, and I think currently just week one is linked. So I'll open that up for you. It'll take you down to every grade level. So if you are doing multiple kids at home, this is your go-to place. I decided to tag it this way so that you wouldn't have to go to multiple sites to get to one set of information for all of the students in your, in your home. So here we go, third grade week one master packet. I'm gonna kind of do a quick overview of what all is included in this packet. Um, so those of you who are watching because your student will be doing this packet at home on paper, you'll kind of have general directions. So these were created by um, third grade teachers. I was one of them. Um, so we kind of put together a couple main focuses for your kiddos to do while at home to kind of help them keep them fresh on some skills. So on third grade, beginning of each section, there is a reading or math work um, overview. So that's what's on the screen right now. It kind of tells you what each topic will be for all of the weeks. If we go all the way to week six, um, each week will also include a daily reading log so that they can track what they're reading. And it doesn't just have to be what they read in this packet. It can be a re book they're reading on the side. Then it gives you an overview of what each of the stories for the week are. 
Um, we did go ahead and put all five days on this week, even though I believe, yes, this Friday is Good Friday. So technically there won't be any school this Friday. So you can choose to take a break. If you're by Friday, so sick of it, you need to just scream. Um, <laughs> if not, there is activities on here for you. So next attached is some what are called anchor charts. Um, these kind of give just general information on different types of questions your kids might be asked about. So like central idea, you often will hear that referred to as main idea. Um, context clues, making sure they know what a word means in a passage. Making inferences, that's when they use what they already know plus what the t passage is telling them to m come up with their answer. So this just kind of gives you a guide of anything you might need when they're answering a question. If they get stuck and you're stuck, you can look back at those. So our passages are all third grade level. Some are shorter, some are longer. This one happens to be a little bit of a shorter one. Um, so they'll need to read through and then they can answer the questions. Um, pretty straightforward. There's some multiple choice answers. There's some um, writing answers. We do ask that on the written answers that you're encouraging your student to write in complete sentences, capital letters, punctuation, making sure that it makes sense. Um, this is how through this module we're introducing writing into it. We're not going to do a separate writing unit. Um, we wanted to just keep it pretty simple and straightforward. So down here, um, more stories, more questions. Like I said, there's four total for the week plus a fifth one that could be for fun. So we also attach something fun for Friday. Um, Miss Land does this often. I've done it once or twice in our class. Um, flashlight Friday, it's um, kids can grab a flashlight and read a book. I encourage you to make a fort. You can get in your fort and read a book. Since you're at home, that would be a lot fun. I would do it if I was a kid. So, and then we attached just one story in case they don't have an extra story to read at home that they um, can do with Flashlight Friday. So then it gets into math. Don't get scared, we kept it simple. So our first part of math is weekly word problems. So it says each day choose three different word problems to solve the read, draw, write method. So each day they have a different word problem they can solve and then they can write answers to it on this document. There's two pages here, a show your work document here and then a show your work document there. So they're pretty simple and straightforward word problems. I think most of them end up having two steps. If you get stuck or need um, help answering or checking your answers, just let me know and I will be a resource for that. So if you scroll on down, it's our second section of math, which is multiplication fluency, is the the second part of math that we chose to focus on. Um, so here kids will refresh themselves on all of their multiplication facts. We started out with the beginning and we're going to build right back up again so that kids can get um, some of those skills, keep them where they should be. We did multiplication and division because it's a double standard for that for third grade. So um, this week is one, zeros and ones, twos, and I believe threes. So I might be sharing out in our morning live videos some of our chants for our multiplication. So the kids, if they want to refresh themselves on those chants, they can. I know we really love singing them in class, so I'll share those out on our morning lives. So that's the packet. It's pretty straightforward. We kept it simple to a few standards of reading, just general comprehension. Can your kids read a passage and answer questions? And if it's a writing question, can they write in complete sentences? Second, math, two-step word problems, and then multiplication and division fluency. Keeping it pretty simple with this third grade packet. Now, to keep it simple for the week, oh, there's Greta in the background. She's eating over there. Um, I have uploaded all of this onto a platform called Seesaw. Seesaw is linked from 
my class website. If you go down to the computer resources, it is now the top resource in that class for the class computer resources. Sorry, coffee break. All right. <clears throat> so when you click Seesaw, it'll take you, hopefully it won't just log me in. It's thinking. It'll take you to the website. Now, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. This is where if you also have a smartphone, you can do Seesaw on your phone. So I have loaded Seesaw on my phone here. Um, it, it's called Seesaw Class. I don't know if I can get it to come up here. It's right there. My background isn't the best um, for showing things on my phone. It's pineapples. <laughs> Anyways, so this is where if you at least have a smartphone, if your kids are doing the paper version at home, you can have them share their work here as well. So I've kind of linked it two places. So for student login, when you come to Seesaw the page, you're going to want to click I'm a student. Now, um, I have sent out a password sheet for everyone to your email. When you come to this sign in page, you're going to come down to the text code. I made my husband a play account so that he, we, I could show you how to do this. So this is what your Seesaw home learning code looks like. So it gives you the directions of how to get to Seesaw or to get to the class app right here. That's the name of it. It is on Apple and Android devices. Then you're going to go to I'm a student and then it says you can scan the built in QR code scanner here. Um, if you're doing it with the phone, that would be pretty simple. Once you got into the Seesaw app, hold on, let me log. Um, I'm a student and then you could click tap or scan the QR code right here. Okay. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show you the way to type in. So this is his code right here um, to get entered in to the part where it's requesting oops, that you, well, let me get back there, enter a text code. So he is, let me see if I can copy paste, P-W-K-O-W-U-L-F-Z-X-U-H. So hit that in. Oh, yay, it copied and pasted. Then click go. Go. There it goes. Okay, panic moment. All right, this takes you into his view as a student. So here's my new student, Brandon, and here is his view currently. So right now, he doesn't have anything in his journal. If he was doing work on a packet, and I'll take a picture to show you, he could go to add something, choose photo. It could bring it up on a, um, a screen, or if you're doing it on your phone, it will ask you to use your phone's laptop. He could hold up his work, take a little picture, It's blurry. Play around with it. I'm not good at taking pictures. And then here's the work on here. Um, there's a record button. You could record, the student could record anything they wanted to tell me about their assignment. Um, what was easy? What was hard? What do they still have questions about? All sorts of stuff can be recorded and shown through this. If you're doing it with a phone, it'll be a little actually easier to take a picture of the actual item. <laughs> So that's a, the bonus to having the class app. Um, if you're doing it on a device that has internet, you won't necessarily need to do this step. I'll show you how to do the next step. So this is a step for someone who is working paper pencil, but wants to use Seesaw to share their work with me. So once it's done, it pops up to show a page. You could add multiple pages by going down here to the bottom where it says add page. 
you can then go in, get your camera ready again, and take another picture of your work. There we go. You can size it up however big you want to make it, move it around. You could add text boxes on it. Um, again, you can record anything that you would like to share. I also believe there is, um, oh, I thought there was a video. Maybe not a video section. That's okay. You can record voice to your picture. All right, once you're done, you'll go up to this green submit button. And then that posts to your page and it sends me a review, a review response so that then I will check it and I can see what you have been posting on your page. And that's how, if you're doing the home paper packet, you can interact with me as well using this app if your parents have a smartphone. Okay, now to students who will only be using Seesaw via a device because they have internet and don't get the paper packets. So you'll go into activities. I have posted a few. <laughs> Pretty much I loaded up everything for this week um, and I included some fun things. So way down here at the bottom begins week one, day one for reading. Math, I put all in one document. So the students just have to go to week one math to do their work um, and then they can post it. Now, math is a little tricky um, and I'll kind of go over that in a second. So when you want to add a response on the digital version, you'll go click add response. I do give directions. I'll pop those up here from the view instructions. They were on that original view as well. Um, this kind of overlay goes over everything they will need to do and or use. Um, and then they can play the instructions I talk to them. So if they don't want to read them, they can just listen to me, which is like being in class. I talk all the time and half the time they don't listen. But that's okay. I still keep talking. <laughs> So here's the student view. It is a little smaller on here, but um, you can make it bigger by scrolling in and then seeing. Um, then over here is where the multiple pages are attached that have the different questions. So for example, if I click in here, here's the questions to that first passage. Now, kids can manipulate this and write on it and not hurt it. So <clears throat> they can answer a couple of ways. Down here at the bottom, they can use one of their tools, pick a color of their choice. Let's see, I'll go with purple. And say they wanna choose this choice for letter A. They can just highlight their answer choices. If they're like, oh no, that's wrong, they can go back and erase it. Um, they can also go to pencil and just circle if they're really talented, I'm not that great using my mouse. If they're using a phone or a tablet, they could use their finger to answer and doodle on here. So that is an option as well. But if you're on a laptop, I um, the pencil is a little hard. I like the highlighter. Um, down here where, let me get to a page, um, a place where they have the written, they can click the text box, move it down, and type in their answer. And I haven't quite figured out if you can resize that or not. Oh yeah, here it is. They can type it, make it smaller, put their answer right in there and I can see it. And they can even get fun and fancy with it and change the font of things because you know they're gonna love to play around with that for hours, probably more than they do the actual work, but that's okay because I want it to be fun. All right, so <clears throat> that's how to answer here on an assignment in specifically reading. Again, here's the original passage. You can make it bigger by selecting this plus bo bo button up at the top, and then you can change the page view by going to pages over here. Also, they can add a 
fact that they liked learning, something they liked or even didn't like um, on this passage. They can even tell me such and such was hard. I didn't understand this. And whenever I check their responses, I can respond back to that and they can see what I've posted comment wise on their work. So this is a great tool for us to have a two-way communication between me and them, and I can kind of respond and help them on any of the work that they aren't quite getting. So here is how to use that. Once you're done with an assignment, you go up to the screen button, you click check, and it will load that into their journal. I think from here, let me see. Yes, I figured out how to edit. If they get it submitted and maybe they aren't done with it, but the time, like you're like, we gotta go to the grocery store and stand in line for who knows how long, I need you to be done. Um, they can go ahead and submit it. Um, they could leave me a comment here and say, not finished. And I won't post it if I see this comment. Um, and then they can come back in and edit the item. It takes them right back to this screen view so they can go in and finish or change something however they want to work on it. So I'm going to click submit again. Once they're done and they've submitted, they can go back down here and type in another comment and tell me that they're done or finished. They're not done like a turkey, like I usually say in class. All right, so now the other activities. We'll go back to activities. I'll scroll all the way back down. So math week one. Um, for working the word problems, because it says choose three different word problems to solve each day, um, that's where that edit feature is going to work. Or they can solve the problems on a piece of paper from this view and then at the end of the week when they're done just take a picture of their paper now this math document has all of the math pages in one document um, just because i felt adding so many different things in for an entire week would it be a little overwhelming so i just put math all in one and then I, the kids can edit when they aren't finished with something and just tell me not finished. Until it says done on the comment section, I will not check it for them or um, submit it to their journal. So down here on the, here is a workspace where if they were to be working and wanting to write or draw on a phone or tablet, they could do that. It's a little harder to show your work with a mouse pad, um, but if you wanna try, go for it. Um, then they could also work on this page as well. For answering the multiplication questions, they can enter a text box, choose the answer, move it over so that I know that they know the answer and if they wanna shrink it down, however small they want to put it on there, not so small, I can't read it like you're writing um then they can do that as well or they could get their pencil out and write their answers with that just as long as i can read it so they can answer that way and then i can go in and see it um, again once they're done or not completely finished and want to work on it later they can click the green check they can come in here if they're not finished comment not finished and then um, if they want to go back and edit they can edit item okay so that's how to do the work now in the activities i have also posted a few fun ones so here's all the rest of the reading day two three four and day fives flash right friday is posted on there as well um, I put a fun one for boarding states around Missouri. If they want to remember the song, eight state song, they can go back to our website under work. And the lyrics are all the way down at the bottom. 
eight states surround Missouri. So Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska. I was on top, as you can see, these eight states around Missouri. We can sing it really fast. So they'll probably get a kick out of singing that for you. So I added a little fun, oops, seesaw um, social studies in there. I also added a fun describe yourself in a photo. So the, the directions are all right here. And then some math games that you can play with just a simple deck of cards. So if you're doing online, you can see this. If you're using your phone app, you can see this as well. So it's accessible to anybody who has a smart device of some sort. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, hopefully you can see how to get your student logged in and how to get them, how they can get to their activities. Their journal is where they have posted or things are waiting to be approved by me. Um, and then inbox, that's where I will send them messages, sometimes to the whole class. I can also choose to send them to individuals. So like here, I sent a little message to get us started this week. So that's the basic overview of Seesaw. Um, my biggest advice for this week is keep it simple. If something's stressing you out, just walk away and roll it old school. Have them answer, whoops, have them answer questions on a piece of paper, have them read their own independent reading book and then tell you about it. Um, you can go low tech if high tech is getting you a little like uh, twitchy eye. Um, but I have put everything on there that you, can and or will need. Now to go back to my screen really fast. Um, just to reiterate, um, on our class website in the home resources section, if you get to Seesaw and you're like, this is going beautifully. We're done with all this work. We want something more. Um, I have added more. So for my tech free friends, um, here is activities they can do that do not include technology. Then down here is all the computer text stuff. So Zern, Extra Math, HMH is the website that they use their my book, which they are familiar with what that is at, at school at home. <laughs> um, so they can get on there and read a story and take a quiz, epic listen to reading. And then I have social studies weekly. They can do science or studies weekly. They can do science and social studies reading on third grade topics. And then spelling city, they can practice this week's spelling words. So I have all those extra resources on there but just to start with i would start with seesaw for this week so keep it simple um take it one thing at a time remember that this is not like actual school and honestly it's not like actual homeschooling um i heard someone good morning i'm filming so um I heard someone share that this isn't homeschooling because it's more like crisis schooling. Our country is in crisis and we're having to switch up our normal routines in order to continue to educate our children. So things are a little different. So take it slow. They really shouldn't be working more than a, tops a couple hours a day period on school. Um, and I recommend even this week starting a little slower and going a little um, slower with it. Maybe 20 minutes on reading, 20 minutes on math, working up to adding anything extra that you want them to do schooling wise and um, keeping it simple. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you need anything, as usual, you can always email, text or call me and I will be hopefully as helpful as I can be. So thank you very much. And I hope this is helpful.